Today we're going to draw this picture of a pair of Canadian geese. I think you'll find it an interesting picture to draw because we start with basic forms and then we work to get a mood in that sky. The first step will be to establish a horizon line across the bottom of your page. Oh, I'd say that's about a fifth or a sixth of the way up because we've chosen, say, an almost ground level view to look at these Canadian geese more or less silhouetted against the sky. Now let's start by drawing the larger one first, setting an oval ball form at an angle like this. Use a carbon pencil or one of the chalks. Sketch an oval shaped outline and uh, don't be afraid to go over your lines because actually in order to draw an oval, the artist often will sketch instead of trying to do it all in one single stroke. But sketch it lightly. Now somewhere up here, oh I'd say right about here, we can put in a smaller oval for the head of this gander. And you'll notice that uh, it sets, well, a little bit forward of the large oval and it sets at a slight angle like that, whereas this one sets at a steeper angle. He is craning his neck forward and uh, he is making a noise. So let's put his beak out here, which is a cone-shaped form, and then the lower part of the beak. Think of this neck as a cylinder form that is curved sort of in an S shape like this. You'll notice too that uh, the head on say a goose is much smaller in relation to the large body than many other types of bird. Notice that this uh, cone, uh, the cylinder form cones out wider where it connects with the oval form of the body too. and suggest some tail feathers down here. Uh, might block in just an outline about the position in which the legs will come later. Now let's place the goose beside the gander but behind it. Notice that we start the oval at the edge so that we get the effect of this oval shaped ball form of the body of the goose as setting behind this larger form, and the angle is about like that. Now, she's not craning her head forward, so I'd say just about straight above the front end of this oval is where you would establish the smaller oval for her head. And he's doing the talking, so we'll keep her mouth closed like this. And a simple curve for the back of the neck instead of this S curve but the front will be an S-curve because it would bulge here at the craw where it joins the oval form of the body. And here again, you can just put in sort of a stick form suggestion as to where we'll put the legs later. Now the reason I've sketched the outlines ahead of time before putting in the sky is because it helps you establish something there and uh, we'll even tone through it later, but let's get a piece of chalk which we'll use on its side to put in that cloud effect. In creating a mood such as we want in this picture, we'll assume that this is just about daybreak. And uh, it's perfect wild goose weather with cloudy skies and heavily overcast, excepting that there will be little breakthroughs here and there as the sun is trying to come up behind the clouds. The flat area here we'd say is the plains region, perhaps up in Canada where these geese summer. They live on the stubble fields, wild grasses and seeds, and in the wheat fields. Then they migrate south. Now we've blocked in some tones for the cloud effect. Let's darken this upper left section even more. Then to get a soft blended effect such as the sun bursting up from behind, notice I've bunched up a piece of cleansing tissue like this and we'll sweep in with strokes 
sweeping right across the outlines of the geese so that we get that effect of sort of streaks of light shooting up from behind the cloud effect. You can experiment with various kinds of uh, skies, create your own form of sky because it can take on many different moods. You might even darken the centers of some of these uh, clusters and then put in a touch of gray for the horizon, suggest that there might even be little hummocks and marshy areas where shallow water is standing. Later we can even put a reflection in that water. Now pick up a black chalk or a black pencil and put in a little patch on the side of the head of each of these geese and that will remain white. The eye would appear a little bit forward of that. Now we can go over our outlines a little more strongly just like that where we smudged it by toning over the sky. And let's make the head and neck of each goose black. Lay your crayon or pencil on its side and blacken in the head and the back side of the neck. Then with a carbon pencil, you can work in around the eye and around that patch so that you blacken the head. Then the other one. Often these drawing lessons go a little too fast for you to do all of these things while we are on the air, but you'll find that you can finish after the program is over and uh, finish up a lot of these details. And notice I left a little highlight along the front edge. Well, even on a black form like that, you'd get a little bit of light, but it wouldn't be pure white. So I'm using a paper stomp here in order to blend to give that a little roundness. And you want to darken the beaks too. Some of their beaks are pretty dark in value. Now for the back and the rest of the body. Let's assume that the wing comes down across the oval about like that in each case. And the back is a pretty dark gray. You can block it in solidly at first. Then with some black chalk, darken the back of the goose, make it come in tight against the breast here of the gander. And then with your chalk on its edge like this, you can suggest the texture of the wings and the feathers on them. Let's darken the back of the gander here and do the same on the rest of the body, on the rest of the back where the wings are resting down over the oval form so that you get the suggestion of feather texture. The tail, although it has a little white area across it, when the wings are down and the gander is standing, the white disappears. And you might suggest the legs with the knobby knees sort of spread, but we're going to cover this lower part with short grass, so you don't need to bother to put in the feet. However, you do need some tone on the underside here, which goes away from the light, and then suggest little feathered effects there on the breast in each case. Now for suggestion of a goose and a gander over here feeding and some tall grasses, maybe wild. Sometimes you find them feeding in the wheat fields. We'll cast a shadow all across this foreground, suggest the grassy area, reflections of that other goose and gander, and across the sky, a V-shaped formation, maybe still another one and another one. Now, of course, you can take time later to add the extended neck and the wings. Wings are sometimes up, sometimes down, but merely use suggestion in that case to create the mood of a goose and a gander on the Canadian flats. <laughs>